president of the Veterinary Circle for 10 from 2016 to 2017. This earned him several awards, including the 2018 CLSU Academic Distinction Awardee, the 2018 Most Outstanding Veterinary Medicine Student of the Philippines, and the 2018 CLSU CVSM Most Outstanding Veterinary Medicine Student. He also received the 2018 CLSU, CLSU Leader Awardee, um, 2017 10 Outstanding Young Novo Esejanos, second place 2017 CLSU Vivencio Sa Ulong Award and the Best in Community Service Awardee. Today, he is also an active partner of various animal rescue and community groups for their trap, neuter, vac vaccinate release projects. Let us all welcome Dr. Glenn Albert Almera. Hi everyone, I hope you and your family are safe and I'm really happy that you are participating in this very important event. A lot of things have changed unprecedentedly and uh, with the snap of a finger, everything seems new. The celebration of occasions, the way we talk to people, the way we work, everything are now done virtually and that bring us to the term, the new normal. My message for today will be focusing on that topic and I hope you listen up to the end because I believe these are the four important messages that you really have to hear now. First, make use of your social media accounts more useful by posting, sharing, and interacting to posts that are relevant to the current issues of the country. I know nowadays you could see that fake news are rampant. They are everywhere. They are flooding the news feeds of everyone. The sharing, posting, and commenting may sound simple, but the effect of fake news is not controlled will result to irreversible damage. Second, maximize your social media influence and connect with people that share your perspective, goals, and visions. Actually, in the new normal setting, to see a significant result is to actually reach large number of people, influence, and encourage them to be part of the change that you want to see in the world. And that could really be very challenging given that social media is very distracting. But with a large number of people, a network of people just like this network of people doing this activity, will work together toward the achievement of one goal and doing that consistently and regularly, the goal can really be achieved. Third, empower yourself and make yourself ready for this new normal by learning the different what's, why's, and how's of the digital world. The more you know about its complexity and technicalities, the lesser you become its slave and the more you can use it on your own purpose and benefit. Fourth, I want you to value your mental health. Social media is an infinite space. There are a lot of things happening in there that is out of our control. And as much as we want to make a change, sometimes it really feels exhausting. Despite all the efforts that we do, actually our close friends and relatives are the ones who are spreading fake news. They are still the ones who believe and support tyranny and corruption and killing. So if one day you feel tired and exhausted, Please, don't be hard on yourself. Take large deep breaths. Take a pause. Take a break. Do whatever you can to prevent yourself from overthinking. Do what your body, yourself deserve. You could watch TikTok videos. You could do TikTok. Eat that food that you want. Visit that place that you really wanted to visit if allowed. But please don't stop with what you're doing. Trust me. You are on the right track. Maybe the things that you're doing seems significant and irrelevant, but one day, trust me, one day, all your efforts will matter. Lastly, my message would be, we, the young generation of today, who are supposed to be more equipped, knowledgeable, and ready for this new normal, we have the biggest responsibility in making an impact, a positive impact in our country. So let's maximize all our potentials in bringing that positive impact that we want to see in the coming years. Let's help together to see that positive change, something that the next generation will be thankful for. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Glenn, for the thoughtful remarks. Yes, 
And now to give us also an inspirational message this afternoon, here is the former College of Business Administration and Accountancy Co Corporate Student Government Business Manager and the current president of CLSU Junior Marketing Association and Board of Management for Student Organizations, college-based representative, Ms. Diana Princess Mabansag. Let's welcome her with a round of applause. Hi everyone, good day, and I hope everyone is doing great. Um, kung nasan man kayo ngayon, especially sa ating mga students um, who are here with us today. Of course, I would like to thank VC10 for inviting me here today. And to everyone, I think um, most of our participants today are student leaders. Actually, I admire the passion and dedication of our CLSU student leaders because amidst the pandemic, I can see naman that everyone is still doing their best uh, to serve the studentry. I know maraming barriers, but um, we still make and find a way to help our students even in the smallest things we can. So to our student councils and student organizations, I know lahat ng webinars and events that you are conducting brings a significant impact to our students. And this event, CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, is actually a good opportunity and a great avenue for you guys to widen your knowledge in terms of conducting activities and promoting campaigns effectively. And we are now here in the second episode of this event. And as a student leader, I find this event um, very interesting too because VC10 together with CLSU Collegian, Veterinary Student Government, Development Communication Student Council, College of Engineering Student Government, CBAA, Corporate Student Government, and Youth Leaders for Democracy made it possible for us to learn uh, more about the financial management and bookkeeping in conducting activities and programs. Other than that, everyone will also get a chance to know more about uh, production of quality publication material. These topics are very essential for you guys, especially sa ating mga student leaders. And I know you will learn so much today. With that, I won't make my um, message any longer. And I hope after this event, you will feel um, more empowered. Because as this event says, all you have to do is say yes to growth yes to development and yes to empowerment thank you and god bless everyone thank you miss diana for the inspiring message Now, for those who registered for today's episode, we sent you a Slido link via email and it contains one question per topic to test your foreknowledge about the lecture. So, dating gawe, ano? And for our first question this afternoon, what characteristics should a news article or a news report have? So, ano nga ba, partner? Our dear participants, we hope you spend time answering that and for those who haven't yet, we encourage you to spare some minute now to answer it. You may scan the QR code presented on the screen right now, or you may also click the link at the chat box or visit slido.com and enter the code 918442. Just type in your one-word answer and you may submit multiple answers. Yes, that's right. The more, the merrier. And we want to hear from you guys. So tara, magsagot na tayo as friends. <laughs> di ba? And habang naghihintay din tayo, here's the summary of our first Slido question. Ayan, ikaw partner, natry mo na bang magsulat ng news article? Yes, partner. Dati na nakikisulat-sulat din ako sa school paper namin. Ikaw ba partner? Feeling ko bihasang bihasa ka na. <laughs> Hindi naman partner, pero may experience tayo sa ano niyan, sa dahil sa radio broadcasting. Pero mm. makikita natin na no partner para sa yo ano ang characteristic dapat na meron ang isang news article. Para sa akin talaga nakikita ko dito sa slide natin ngayon yung pinakamahalaga which is accurate. At yes, syempre, right. unbiased. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you, partner. And sa akin naman, I believe ganun din uh, factual. Kailangan factual din ang ating news article, di ba? And ayan, makikita natin ang daming nagsagot ng unbiased, accurate, factual, and timely. Yes. And yes, ang daming uh, characteristics dito, no, partner? Ayan. So, thank you for your participation. Simula pa lang yan. So, without further ado, let me now introduce everyone to our first presenter. Now, our first presenter is living with a quote, if not me, then who? She is a graduate of Associate in Chemical Technology in Central Luzon State University in 2020. And from the same university, she is currently pursuing Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. In 2018, our first presenter also worked as a CBMS field editor in the municipality of Rizal, Nueva Ecija, and currently working as the website content manager in the same municipality. She is also the former managing editor, managing editor for the management, circulations editor, and the current news editor in CLSU Collegian. Our first speaker this afternoon is also an advocate of good governance and youth leadership and has won various awards such as the winner of the Positive Young Leaders of the Philippines this year. She is the current co-advisor of Kaya Tayo Taya, a youth community organization of Rizal, and she also became part of the Chinelas Youth Leadership Fellowship Program under the Robredo Foundation, Kaya Natin Youth, and San Miguel Foundation, and also became a delegate of Philippine Model Congress in 2018. To empower CLSU students on news writing as a powerful means of communicating their projects and advocacies, and give us her lecture on interfaces news writing. Let us all welcome Ms. Jamie Criza P. Benemerito. Hello guys, good afternoon. So I'm your Ate Jamie Crisa Pibinamarito, the current news editor of Celestial Collegian. So can I start now the presentation? Yes, po. Go okay. ahead. So ngayong araw, um sorry. So ngayong araw, I'm here to discuss about news writing. So where we can learn about the basic of journalism in this episode two of Silosu Youth Empowerment Series Weekend. So starting off the discussion, um, what do we know about news writing? So alam naman natin na napapaligiran tayo ng mga balita. Everywhere we go in newspapers, uh, television, radio, magazines, and even in internet and social media, ay kalat na kalat ang mga balita. So what do we know about it? Okay, what is news writing? So in here, it says that news writing gives the reader a factual information that will interest and affect them in some ways. So remember, the main focus of news is to interest the readers to give factual information about anything that is happening around us. Okay, moving forward to that, um, here's an example of a front page of um, Manila, Manila Times released in 2019. So I can find any recent front page of newspaper, but just to show you a sample of a news article or a news page. So here it is. Okay, next. So what makes the story newsworthy? So we have the elements of news articles. So here are the seven elements that is made to consider when writing one. First is timeliness. So, ang balita ba ay napapanahon? So, element of time. So, we should focus on that. Um, some of an example of uh, timeliness of a news is, sino ba ang tatakbo kandidato para sa presidential elections in this upcoming 2022 uh, national elections? Siyempre, napapanahon niyan dahil katatapos lamang ng uh, filing ng COCs kahapon and 
natapos na rin yung list ng mga nagbabala kung mandidato para sa position na yon. So that's what make the makes the um the news timely. So napapanahon. So balitang balita yan. So even in different news site nakikita natin na sino yung mga bet nyo, sino yung sino yung sino yung pambato nyo, sino yung kailangan yung ikampanya para sa darating na election. So there. Next is the proximity. So proximity is pertaining to the closeness of place and also the interest. Syempre, um example is sa lugar. Um sa lugar nyo is tumataas yung kaso ng COVID-19. So that's news. So why? Kasi um apektado ka sa lugar nyo, nandun ka sa lugar na yon and bakit kailangan mong malaman yung balita na yon? Kasi isa ka sa maaapektuhan nun. Ano yung nagiging factor ng pagtaas? Kailangan mong malaman yan. Sino yung mga natatamaan? So that's an example of proximity news. So next year we have here the impact, number three. Impact, what is an impact? It's about the new story will going um how the new story will going to affect them um affect the readers example sa um yung mga fishermen sa malapit sa West Philippine Sea alam naman natin na matagal nang pinagkukunan ng kabuhayan ng mga mangingisda yung mga lamang dagat okay so um pero no nagsimulang angkinin ng China ang West Philippine Sea ang party ng dagat na yun, naapektuhan yung mga, mga ngingisda natin dahil sa pangaharas ng mga China vessels. So, naapektuhan yung mga nandon, mga nakatira doon. So, malaking impact yun dahil pwede yung mauwi sa state of, um, sa state of, um, magkakaroon yun ng parang conflict, national conflict, and pwede tayong madami doon. Lahat tayong nandito sa Pilipino, pwede magkaroon ng war uh, against territories ganon okay sorry what's this gonna cut up so next is the prominence prominence is about knowing someone um about their social statuses positions achievements and events in life so the recent news na nabasa ko last night is about maria reza if kilala nyo siya so maria reza is a journalist and a co-founder of rappler na nanalo sa isang prestigiousong award ng Nobel Peace Prize. Um, dito kinikilala yung efforts niya na i-safeguard yung freedom of expression, lalo na dito sa Pilipinas. So alam naman natin, lalo na um, last year, marami nagkaroon ng controversies about Maria Reza and the Rappler about um, nagkaroon pa ng mga lawsuits regarding that. And those prove those uh, incidents prove na kaya niyang protektahan yung freedom of expression and kaya niyang lumaban against um kaya niyang luma, lum, lumaban against um uh, fake news okay so next is oddity so from the word itself odd kakaiba pagkakaiba balita yan so example of a news na na nabasa ko from 2019 is tungkol sa sanggol na may dalawang ulo. So, syempre, ba, hindi naman hindi naman kadalasan mayroong pinapanganak na may dalawang ulo. So, lahat 'yon ay ay so yon ay isang news. Paano nangyari 'yon? So, tatanungin mo, ano yung naging biological reason kung bakit nangyari 'yon? Ano yung naging ano yung naka-apekto dun sa pagbubuntis ng nanay and paano naging posible 'yon? So, kung 'yun yung mga kailangan nating alamin pag binabalita 'yon. So, these are the questions na mapapaisip ka talaga na dahil kakaiba yun, balita yun sa haramihan. Okay? Next is conflict. Conflict is about physical and mental struggle. Example of it is the investigation of ICC of the Philippines about President Duterte war on drugs. So it is a conflict because um, Ms. I, President Duterte um, doesn't let the ICC to have jurisdiction about this war on drugs. So there's a struggle. So there's a struggle, there's a conflict. So that's news. Okay, last is human interest. So human interest appeals to the emotion, emotion and instincts of the readers. So this element, um, when applied to a news, become a soft news. So lumalambot yung balita. Hindi siya katulad ng other six 
na hard news. So it shows the emotion and emotions and appeals to the feelings of the subjects. I appeals the emotions of the subject or the main idea. Example of it is the students na nag-struggle sa online class, nag-struggle to survive in an online class na walang-wala and yung iba naman, naghahanap ng part-time job, nagtatrabaho kahit nag-aaral. So, that is an example of human interest. And it is a new soft news. Nararamdaman mo yung emotion kasi binabalita kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ng tao based on a factual factual news. Okay? Next, he, next is, let's move forward to the characteristics of news. What makes the news story good? So, um, initially, we as writers, um, we remembered it as the ABCs of writing. We have the accuracy, brevity, and the clarity. But we added with, but it was added with two, so naging lima na characteristics natin. First is accuracy. So um, accuracy is how um, correct the, the statements, um, the facts, the figures, the numbers, the names, the quotations you are using in our using in writing a news article all of that must be true and um accurate so kung meron kang data na if the figure says that we have a percentage of 97.001 then you write it as 97.001 so walang bawas walang kulang so that's accurate next is brevity brevity um News is meant for the reader who is in a hurry. Lagi pag nagbabasa, dire-diretso yan, mabilisan lang nabasa yan. So that's why news must be concise at all times. Kailangan natin, um, kailangan natin may maikling news, pero andun lahat ng idea. Jump pack lahat. Kung baga, um, alam na alam natin lahat ng idea. So walang palabok na mga salita, walang paligoy-ligoy. Hindi, da hindi dapat sumusunod sa utos na 500 words, 1,000 words required to finish that article. So, walang ganun. Okay? C, for clarity, um, dapat malinaw kung ano ang gusto mong patungkulan. Straight to the point. Dahil um, walang panahon para magbalik-balik yung mambabasa mo sa binabasa niya. So, kailangan dire-diretso yun. Malinaw lahat ng sinasabi mo, hindi yung paligoy-ligoy pa na ganun, parang marites mo. Chismis. Okay. Next is objectivity. The writer's opinion um and feeling must must be kept out of the story. So you should not be biased. So kahit na apektuhan ka man nun, na apektuhan ka man, ka man nun na masama or mabuti, hindi mo dapat isipin yung feelings mo. Dapat sabihin mo lang kung ano yung nalalaman mo. Okay? You must be um you must be um true to the facts na meron ka. Kung ano yung nakuha mong facts, yun ang ibalita mo. Walang halong nararamdaman, walang walang halong feelings. Okay? Last is factual. So, factual facts. That's the core of news. If the news isn't factual, then hindi yun news. Okay? It's opinion. Always stick to the facts and nothing more. Doon lang tayo ikot. Stick to the facts. Now we know the characteristics, but what do we know about the kinds of art of news article? So we have two here. So first is the street news. Street news is also known as hard news, where um, it reports the most essential information in a concise and impartial manner. So dito sinasabi, um, maikli lang ang street news, straight to the point, kaya nga street eh straight to the point lang yan, walang paligoy-ligoy and also nagpapakita ng balance na opinion I mean, balance na facts ng, kunyari, pinalita may nagbalita ka ng conflict tungkol sa dalawang tao, kailangan mong ibalita yung side ng isa at side ng isa so kailangan, balance lagi tayo dun sa street news okay, next is, how do we write um the street news um, just focus on the five W's and one H. If you're familiar with it, yun yung who, what, where, when, why, how. So meanwhile, yun yung sa street news. So meanwhile, going forward to news feature, um, it is also known as the soft news. So the writer describes 
um, give his impressions and narrate in a manner of unbiased opinion. So dito sinasab, parang nagdi-describe siya dito ng mga pangyayari ng mga facts, pero always based on facts. Kunyari, um, naging malakas ang pagsabog, parang hindi naman natin kailangang sabihin na malakas. Pwede nang sumabog na lang, di ba? So, straight news, sumabog. Pero sa news feature, malakas ang pagsabog. Bakit mo nasabing malakas ang pagsabog? Dahil dun sa measurement of intensity ng pagsabog, nakarate yung intensity na yun sa malakas. So, factual. Gan ganun ang news feature. Okay? And biased opinion, but um, in describing manner. Okay? So, how do we write news? Okay. How do we write news? Is there any structure that comes by it? So we have so-called the inverted pyramid of news writing. So it suggests that um, the, an order of most important of most important information that comes first to the least important information to the latter part. So dito sa part na to, kita may pointer ko. So dito sa part na to, ito yung most newsworthy information. Dito na pupunta yung who, what, when, where, why, how. So, bakit, bakit inverted pyramid? Kasi makita natin dito na ito yung may pinakamalaking portion. So, dapat andon lahat ng mga mabibigat na idea. Andito lahat yung pinakakailangan natin. Pag nabasa natin, ah, okay, alam ko na yung story. Okay, ganun. Kasi yung, main, kasi yung ibang tao, sa sobrang pagmamadali nilang magbasa ng news, hindi na binabasa tong latter part na to. Hanggang dito lang sila. Kasi dito pa lang, alam na nila kung ano nangyari. Okay? So, we, um, this inverted pyramid, pwede natin siyang iayos na. Okay, dito, need to know. Need. Needs natin. Kailangan nating malaman. So, dito, okay, nice to know. Depende na lang kung babasahin mo. Okay? So, next, um, how to write a news article. So, we have the first two, which is the headline and byline. So, headline tells what the story is about. And it gives you the idea of what will be tackled upon the story. So now you have the idea, but what does the byline suggest? It shows who wrote the story. Yun yung byline. And if you have any clarifications, yung clarifications nyo about yung the author, recommendations about this article, and um, kung ano yung mga naiisip nyo pang parang medyo magulo, Doon nyo titignan sa bailan, yun yung taong i-approach nyo. Doon yung i-approach nyo para malinawan kayo. So here is an example of headline and byline. Um, I get it on the um, website of inquiry.net. So here it is. The headline here is, Isco questions Robredo's rationale, why run only to block the Marcuses? So this part is the headline of the news. Then where is the, I know, where is the byline? The byline will be seen in here. So we can see here in highlight, highlighted na blue, which is the name of the writer and the, its social media account. That's how you research how credible the writer is and by means of approaching it for concerns. So this um, headline, um, the idea here is the question of Mayor Escudo, Vice President Lenny Robredo, and her agenda in the candid candidacy of president position. So as we all know naman na both of, the, both of them are candidates in the side positions and opinions on one another are surfacing as the election, as the election period will start soon. So balik tayo sa pagsusulat ng news article. Lead. Pangatlo tayo, lead. So, the next part of the news article and one of the most essential part is the lead paragraph. So, lead paragraph summarizes the entire story in the form of five W's and one H. If and only necessary. So, um, we do not tolerate, uh, we writers, we do not tolerate um, the writings with writings of lead paragraph with um overloaded information and overwhelming ideas minsan kasi um pag binabasa mo dapat yung lead hindi ka dapat malalagutan ng hininga sa so, sobrang haba parang hinihingal-hingal ka ng ganun so hindi dapat ganun meron ding maximum na 
um, number of words na kailangan mo lang ilagay dun sa mismong lead paragraph. And that's how you will know that the lead, that your lead is good. So next we have here the body. So the body contains the additional information about the story. Additional information about the story. The other information that you can um, write in the lead will be put in here. Diba sabi ko kanina, you will only write the five W's and one H in the lead if and only necessary. Pero kung hindi mo naman kaya, kaya siyang ilagay lahat doon and sobrang jump pack na nung lead mo, ilagay mo siya sa body as a supporting statement. Kasi basta andun yung pinaka main idea sa lead, then ilagay mo siya sa body, magiging maganda na yung article mo. So, alam niyo when writing lead in a, or writing an art news article in a competition, um special ay kasad, kadalasan yung mga judge uh, hindi na nila tinitingnan yung entire article mo. So, ang tinitingnan lang nila is yung lead. Then if nagustuhan nila yung lead, saka pa lang nila itutuloy sa body hanggang sa ending. Pero if not, diretso yan sa tao na papel. <laughs> so, you make more interesting yung lead paragraph nyo and hook up readers to read your entire story. So, um, lastly, we have the ending here. It gives something to think about um, or updates on the follow-ups of the story. Pwede din siyang um, closing statements closing statements ng mismong entire story. So here in the next slide, um, the examples of lead and body and ending. Okay, the one with the green box, nakita natin dito. Um, nakalagay dyan, Manila, Philippines. So why Manila, Philippines? It indicates where the article is written. So saan siya sinulat? Sa Manila, Philippines. Okay, so let's read the lead. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno raised question over Vice President Lenny Robredo's reasoning to run for president, asking why she is basing it only with the goal of stopping the Marcoses' return to power. We can able to see the who, what, and why here in the lead paragraph. So which leaves us with the sa natin mahanap yung when, where, and how. So makikita natin yun dito in the second paragraph. Um, where um, the second paragraph become the supporting lead of the main lead of the article. So where, sa press con, when, on Friday, and how he aired his concerns about um, he aired his concerns about the stance of Vice President Robredos. So that's how you know. So in the last two. Last two paragraphs of article, um, it was stated in there that Robredo's rationale about running for president is to prevent a government similar to the current one and stop Marcus's from returning to Malacanang due to the um, history. So that's basically sums up the entire news article. So ang ginawa niya dito sa ending, news ending, is sinums up niya kung ano yung pinaka main idea no mismo article so that's how you end a news article okay moving forward to the types of lead paragraphs we have two kinds of leads one is the conventional lead and the other is that unconventional so the conventional lead also known as the summary lead answers to the five w's and one h so Conventional lead is also known as that traditional lead na kadalasan ginagamit sa mga news sites, sa mga tabloids, and sa um, tabloids and sa mga broadsheets. So, under the, um, the conventional lead, we can write different format based on the importance of the subject that we have. So, first, we have the who lead. Sa who lead, pinapakitignan natin yung um, the prominent person, binabalita natin yung prominent person based on her social status, um, popularity, money, fame, ganon. So in here, example, we have Vice President Lenny Robredo is no longer concerned that she and Manila Mayor Isko Moreno would split the opposition vote in the 2022 presidential race, saying her group has always been the real opposition even from the start. 
pinapakita dito na ang pinaka um, prominent sa lead na to, ang pinaka balita is the opinion of the Vice President Lenny Robredo regarding on the um, opposition, opposition, real opposition in the election with Manila Mayor Isko Moreno. So alam kasi natin na parang naging ganyan sila dikit then suddenly pagdating election naging ganyan. So that's news. Next is the what lead. So here is a naval convoy, convoy of three U.S. warships and two reflag Kuwaiti oil tankers streamed through the Strait of Hermos on Wednesday and entered the war flag Persian Gulf without infer interference from Iran. Interference from Iran. So that means um, the, the most straight news um, lead plays up what is the story is about. So um, this lead statement um, is about how the subject has passed through the Strait of Hermos and Persian Gulf without a break out of conflict. So kadalasan, pag hindi, meron tayong tinatawag na, um, what you call that, may tinatawag tayong border control at hindi ka lang pwedeng dumaan-daan kung sa anong mga bansa. So meron tayong mga harang-harang dyan. So naging balita to kasi wala man lang nangyaring war or conflict nung dumaan yung isang war yung mga warships and tankers sa isang lugar. So that is that is news to everyone. So next here is Wilid. So Wilid is knowing the why of the article. So it it is obvious naman dito sa example natin na the the purpose of um signing the uh, sweeping signing of sweeping and controversial land reform program is to provide the provide land to millions of landless peasants so it is signed by our late president Cor corazon aquino so that's how you do why lead meanwhile how did paragraphs um are often used for the unusual happening or action stories here in the here in the example um staging a 48-hour walk out beginning today, nearly 100 South Korean journalists at a government-controlled television station demanded that government stop dict dictating how they cover the news. So this kind of news is very unusual because um, the Korean journalists are under the palm. So under sila, the under the palm of a dictator, dictator govern dictator government, where the journalists should have a freedom of speech to look forward to. So, tayo mga journalists, kailangan natin ng freedom of speech. Okay. To say what, syempre, to say, to say what we want, to, um, uh, to state what do we, what do we, what do we believe in, okay? So, next is the when lead. This is when the time or date of an event is important to the reader. Um, tomorrow, um, example here is tomorrow, tomorrow, March 15 is the last day for filing individual tax returns. So, um, kitang kita naman natin na mahalaga yung date na to kasi yun yung last day of filing of individual tax returns. So, the date here is the prominent one. So, last is the where lead. So, a uh, where lead, it is used when an event takes place to an unusual location. So the unusual location in here is the Covalescent Homes in Solano. So that's making news because um, it is a site for beauty pageants for the representative ng mga uh, uh, representatives of My Fair Lady pageant. So the location here is the unusual one. So yun yung kabali balita. Okay. Next type of lead paragraph is the conventional lead where nasabi ko na kanina, um, there are so many types of the unconventional leads, but most of it are used by the professional news writer. So, ito lang yung, itong example ko is, masyado, ito yung gamitin ng mga rookie and mga news writer na pan lang, mga nasa middle, ganun, katulad ko, ganun. So, um, baka familiar din kayo, so, pasahin natin, historical revenge, rev, rev, Visionism may happen particularly on the martial law regime of President Ferdinand Marcos. If the late dictator's son, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, 
Jr. gets elected as president, according to Manila Mayor Isko Moreno. So this lead paragraph is from Inquire.net. Kinuha ko doon. So, um, in quotation leads, uh, pag gagawa kayo ng mga quotation leads, um, the one who write a quotation leads, dapat magsisimula tayo sa quotation lead, then magkakaroon tayo ng transition na parang um, i-blend in natin yung transition para hindi, para maging smooth yung process ng pagkikwento. Para lang kayo nag storytelling in a factual note. Okay? So, this is to maintain the good elaboration of ideas na meron ka in a factual manner. Okay? So, tips in writing a news article. So, Remember that in news article, make use of one sentence, parag one parag paragraph rule. Okay, ganun ang rule sa news writing. So make um make use of that one sentence kasi napaka-importante in, in writing a news article. Next is always use active voice. So kailangan active voice lagi ang gagamitin, hindi passive voice. Kasi news tayo, laging ora-orada, andyan lagi, okay? So avoid editorialization, avoid opinions. Tulad nga ng sabi ko, pag hindi na factual, hindi, pag based on feelings, based on comments, based on opinions, hindi na news yun. So we must all, uh, we should always stick to the facts. So use less than 30 words in a paragraph. Katulad ng sinasabi ko, if there's one sentence, one paragraph rule, meron din tayong um, pinaka maximize number of words na ginagamit sa isang paragraph and that is 30 words para hindi natin parang hindi tayo hinihingal pag binabasa yun. Okay? So, number 1 to 9 are spelled out while 10 up are numerical. So, pag nagsusulat ka ng news, even in Tagalog, the number 1 to, to 9 ay sinusulat yan in spelled out form while 10 on ay 10 upward yan ay sinusulat in a numerical numerical form. Kasi mas madaling basahin yung mga smaller numbers in um, um, spelled out while the higher numbers are mas madaling basahin in a numerical form. So next is identify all person, cite all sources, and put direct and indirect quotation. Dito naman, um, in a news article, kailangan natin mag-identify ng mga persons to make our news article credible. Cite natin lahat ng sources na pinagkuhanan. Dapat ang mga sources ay first-hand information. Kung hindi naman ay pwede, ang pinaka-best na is yung second-hand information and hindi na dapat umabot ng third-hand information. Kasi parang naging chismis na yung dating doon. So, also, put direct and indirect quotation to your um, news article to support the statements and the facts na sinasabi doon. Next, in an English, in an English news article, a noun is followed by a verb, and in Filipino, the verb is followed by a noun. So, sa news article, kadalasan ang inuuna natin ay yung noun, and sa Filipino, kadalasan ang ginagamit natin ay verb. For example, in Filipino, um, so sinabi ko kanina, sumabog, ay sumabog ang isang um, nuclear power plant sa ganitong lugar. So, lagi na una yung verb kasi mas may dating siyang pakinggan pag nagbabasa tayo ng news. Okay? So, next is avoid using the, a, an, according to at the start of the paragraph. So, dahil nga, noun, hindi natin kailangan gamitin yung mga words na yun kasi para, siyang nag, para lang siyang magiging simple sentence and wala siyang kadating-dating para pa sa atin. So, parang Okay, dal, sobrang dal. Okay? Then last is to avoid the use of jargon words. So jar jargon means unfamiliar words. Kailangan pag nagsusulat ka ng news article ay naiintindihan dapat yan ng mga um, lahat ng tao, even lang yung nandyan sa kalsada, even lang yung mga nakatambay, dapat at naiintindihan nila yung bawat words na sinasabi mo. Kung hindi mo naman kaya ang pasimplihin, maglagay ka ng parang um, simple um we should uh, you should put um simple na uh, elaboration ng mismo word para mas maintindihan nila in that case may intindihan nila yung mismo story mo okay and that sums up my um presentation always remember na right to express and not to impress have a good day everyone and thank you for listening
Ayan, thank you so much po, Miss Jamie. And I'm sure marami na naman po matutunan ng ating mga youth leaders sa inyo pong lecture. Para po sa akin, tama po yung sinabi niya that news is very important because it gives us factual and timely information. And mahalaga siya sa atin ngayon dahil alam naman po natin na we are bombarded with information and kapag alam natin yung mga kahit basics lang of news writing, um, we are able to filters, eh, filter yung mga news na fact, based on facts at alam natin i-filter yung mga mga fake news. Ayun. Ikaw friend, ikaw partner para sa iyo. Ano yung Yes, I agree mo? with you. Yes, I agree with you partner and thank you Miss Jamie for uh, your presentation po. Ang pinaka na-remind po ako sa ABCs of writing and bukod pa doon yung object dapat hindi lang tayo ah, hindi lang siya, hindi lang tayo accurate hindi lang dapat may brevity and clarity yung sinusulat natin kundi dapat objective din tayo and factual sabi mo sabi nga ni Miss Jamie kanina hindi dapat feelings or walang halong feelings dapat yung news article na sinusulat natin dapat facts over feelings and sabi nga ni Miss Jamie kanina we should write to express and not to impress di ba ang gusto natin kaya tayo nagsusulat ng news is to inform other people and not to impress them di ba kaya thank you so much po Miss Jamie and let's move on to our uh, first few questions this afternoon. Ang sabi po dito for our first question, uh, what instances po ba dapat gamitan ng straight news or news feature? Or siguro po, kailan, kailan ginagamit or kailan, saan dapat ginagamitan ng news, ang, ng straight news or news feature? Okay. Katulad nga nung sabi ko kanina, um, straight news is often used um, sa tawag dito, sa mga incident reports, sa mga government um, related reports or articles. Then also yung uh, news feature naman ang focus dun sa part nung um, wait lang. Uh, part nung um, element of uh, element of tawag dito? Element of news article na human interest. So, that's a soft news. Doon sa human interest, doon kasi natin pinapasok yung feeling dapat mag, magkakaroon ng interest, magkakaroon ng binding ng interest and feeling yung writer and yung reader. So, doon sa human interest, parang kinakapture natin yung reader natin with emotions. Emotions ng mismong story natin. So, doon natin pinapasok yung news feature. Then, sa mga straight news naman natin, doon natin pinapasok yung mga serious matter, mga seryosong bagay katulad nung um, uh, uh, elections, um, mga sunog, mga calamities, and also yung pagkakaroon ng mga kaso, mga seryosong bagay. Okay? So, yun lang. Ayun, thank you po, Miss Jamie. At pumunta naman po tayo sa ating second question. What factors should be considered when making a hook statement? Ulitin ko po. What factors should be considered when making a hook statement? So in a hook statement, um, doon nakadepende yung mga elements of news articles. Diba sinabi ko kanina, we have seven. So that seven elements, doon uh, parang yun yung time na mag magkakaroon ng interest, ma-hook up yung readers mo to read what you are writing. So, ibabase mo lagi yung news article mo in those elements and that um, those elements will make your readers hook to your writing. So, yun lang po. Okay po. And for our last question, uh, sabi po dito, I am a member of an organization and we also release news in our social media accounts. Any tips po on how to avoid editor editorialization? Thanks po. In about um, to avoiding ed editorialization, meaning kasi meron kang standpoint dun sa mismong article. Sa editorial kasi ganun yung um, nagiging um, parang policy. Meron kang standpoint, meron kang pinapanigan despite na um, meron kang um, meron kang source 
or meron kang facts between those two uh, those two position pero meron kang pinapanigan in news articles or news in releasing news dapat balance ka lang sa lahat ng bagay uh, balance yung pagtingin mo sa ganito sa ganyan hindi ka dapat papanig and dapat pinapakita mo yung both sides both sides ng story so yun lang Thank you so much po, Miss Jamie. And I believe wala na pong mga uh, tanong this afternoon. Thank you so much po for your presentation. Ayan. Thank you so much po, Miss Jamie. So moving on to the awarding of certificate, allow me to read the certificate citation. So certificate of appreciation is given to Miss Jamie Crisopi Benemerito for sharing her time and expertise as the resource speaker of the topic Interfaces News Writing as part of the CLSU Youth Empowerment Series Yes Weekend, held online via Zoom and Facebook Live on October 9, 2021. Signed, President of Veterinary Circle 410, Ms. Daisy Aconia, and the Advisor of Veterinary Circle 410, Dr. Froyland Bernard Matias. Yes, there you go. Thank you so much again po, Miss Jamie. I hope hindi ito na miss ng ating mga participants. And may we request our viewers on Zoom to please open your cameras for a photo op with our first speaker. Ayan. So we have a facilitator on Zoom who will take the photos. So on the count of three, please show us your sweetest smile in three, two, one. Smile! Ayan, isa pa yung iting, ano, yung iting nakita si Crush daw. <laughs> In 3, 2, 1. Ayan, there you go. Again, thank, thank you, you so Ms. much Jamie po. Krizo. Again, Ms. Jamie. Thank you po. Yes, thank you po. God It's a pleasure God having God you it. as our first presenter po on this episode. Salamat po. Yes. And to our participants, we encourage you to post or tweet or tweet your takeaways with the hashtags hashtag CLSU Youth Empowerment Series and hashtag C, and hashtag Yes Weekend and make sure that the post or tweet is in a public privacy setting so that our facilitator can easily see your post or takeaways and from there we will choose one winner per topic. So before we move on to our second resource speaker, as mentioned earlier, we emailed a Slido link to those who registered where you can answer this, the question for topic two, what aspect of handling funds do you find most difficult? We urge those who have not yet responded to do so right now. You may scan the QR code on the screen or vid, visit slido.com and enter the code 918441 or check the chat box for the link. You may submit numerous responses by just typing in your one word answer. So ayan, magsagot na tayo. Yes. That's right. So habol tayo sa mga hindi pa nakakapag Yan, habol, habol po. And ayan, part. Ha yes, habang naghihintay din tayo, eh, here's the summary of our second question. Ayan, ikaw partner, what aspect of handling funds do you find, find most difficult? So ayun, saktong-sakto kasi ah, uh, um, currently, I, I am the treasurer of veterinary student government and yun nga, na-experience na din namin na ang pinakamahirap talaga sa, sa pag-keep ng funds is yung pagre-record, especially kapag, kapag um, ino-audit na yung pera. So, yun talaga yung mahirap, record-keeping. Yes. Ikaw, partner, para sa sa'yo. Ah, yes. Uh Oo. -oh. Actually, partner, hindi ko pa natatry na mag-handle mag ng funds. Hindi ko pa natatry maging treasurer or auditor. Pero siguro for me, 
Wala, hindi ko rin talaga alam. Pero sabi nila, uh, ano Ayan, daw? Ayan, ang bilis Same nagbago. Thing. Yes, ang bilis nagbago oh, ng ano. Joke lang. <laughs> Iba pala yun, partner. Sabi nila Wait, dito. Wait, tignan mo dito. Ayan, may nakalagay. Kupit. <laughs> may naglagay ng kupit. Record Mahirap talaga yon Bawal kasi yon Ayun. Yes. And sabi rin, marami rin nagsagot. Ayan, may nabago pa ulit. Ayan, sabi naman Ayan, dito, uh, auditing kasama sa mga ano, kasama mm. sa mga uh, aspects na nahihirapan sila ay sa pag-audit and sa pagba-budget. Ayan. Yan, oo nga, tama yan, tama. So, all right, let me now introduce our second speaker this afternoon. Our second speaker finished his bachelor's degree in accountancy at Central Luzon State University in 2008. In 2017, he finished his master's degree in accountancy at De La Salle University and his master's degree in business administration in 2019 at Central Luzon State University. Furthermore, in 2008 to 2010, he also served as a senior accountant in Millennium Business Services Incorporated in Makati City and was part of the CFO's Mind in Asian Institute of Management back in 2014. Aside from that, he is also a finalist in the 10 Outstanding Young Novo Esihanos in 2017. And currently, he is the program host of Buhay Negosyo at Radio CLSU, the Vice President for Membership at the Philippine Institute of Certified Public Accountants, Nueva Ecija Chapter. And our second speaker is a Certified Public Accountant, an instructor at our dear university, and the department head of the Department of Accountancy of the College of, College of Business Administration and Accountancy to give us his lecture on GAIN, Grasping Accounting and Auditing Intricacies, Ladies and gents, let us all welcome Assistant Professor Gaudencio P. Gallardo, Jr. Good afternoon po, sir. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon po. Okay, I'm here at the College of Business Administration and Accountancy. Kasi medyo nagka-problema yung connection sa boarding house, alright? Um, first of all, I would like to thank for that very um, um, ano ba? Uh, inspiring introduction, alright? And um, thank you also to VC10 for inviting me as one of the, the uh, resource speakers for this afternoon. Um, I would like to greet everybody. Good afternoon and uh, thank you for, for your participation. Um, even Saturday, uh, we, 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 that is just an indication that we value learning. No? All right. So yes. um, I, 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 I was advised by, the mem by a member of the, the CSG of our college that I will be given only 20 to 30 minutes to present. So I'm really challenged because uh, the, the topic is accounting and auditing. They, these are very broad topics. But... I will be given only 20 to 30 minutes. So I can't imagine kung paano ko siya ipepresent. But since um, our audience, uh, majority ng ating audience, or I guess ang mga audience talaga natin dito ay mga estudyante, uh, we will be focusing on the accounting and auditing, specifically on, uh, on, on how to handle funds, all right, um, in the context of student organization. All right? Siyempre, ang discussion natin ay geared towards doon sa achievement ng ating mga objectives sa student organization, specifically on the effectiveness and efficiency of operations. All right? So, doon tayo magpo-focus para ma-utilize natin yung, uh, yung time during this afternoon. Okay. Can I share my screen? Yes, sir. All right. So, bear with me. This is the only... This is the first time, actually, that I will be using this platform. I'm used to ano kasi, Google Classroom and the Zoom. All right, can can you see my presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I you can see my presentation. However, I cannot see you. <laughs> All right. Oh, but anyway, 
just please ano ha bigyan bigyan niyo ako ng um ng uh, or or i-call niyo attention ko kung mayroong problema kung biglang mawala yung presentation all right so the topic is grasping accounting and auditing intricacies or gain all right let's begin so here's the topic outline all right so i hope i'll be able to cover all these in 30 minutes okay so is there really a need for accounting and auditing the answer is a big yes now in our daily lives actually we are doing out accounting every day okay we are doing accounting every day maybe we are not just aware of it no um sometimes you ask ourselves where did our where did my money go all right um minsan napapaisip ka bakit biglang nawala <laughs> and worse pinagbibintangan mo pa minsan yung mga tao sa paligid mo no parang feeling ko kinuha ni ganito yung pera parang nabawasan yung cash ko sa wallet etc but when you tried to account even a single peso from from the moment you withdrew your cash, the moment you receive your cash, up to the moment you're asking yourselves, where did my money go? Lumalabas pa rin siya, no? Nare-reconcile. Yun yung, yun yung ano, madalas nangyayari. Na parang feeling mo na walang ka ng pera. Okay, accounting is as simple as that. No, you account for your cash receipts, you account for your cash disbursements, determining the, the cash balance at the end of the period. Okay? And auditing is... Um, normally conducted by our parents pag binigyan ka ng pera niya bigla kang tatanungin oh saan mo dinala yung ganito saan mo dinala yung ganito, yung ganyan no ang hirap lumusot nag-o-audit sila okay um in the context of of student organization ang accounting na napag-uusapan natin dito is how you will be able to present financial information present uh, relevant information for decision making of your student organization as well as auditing the operations of the student organization uh, focusing on cash. Okay, kasi mas madalas naman ang resource ng ating organization ay uh, cash naman eh. Hindi, hindi tayo masyado sa mga uh, assets, no, na like PPE, yung mga property, plant and equipment, mga building, hindi yan. We are normally or usually accounting for cash transactions. All right? So first of all, let's have um the technical definition of accounting no it's a its function is to provide quantitative information it's a service activity and primarily financial in nature about an entity the entity here is your student organization okay which is intended to be useful in making economic decisions pag naririnig natin yung accounting parang napaka technical ng ibig sabihin niya no especially for uh um mga non business related courses Okay, pero sabi ko nga kanina, marami naman na paraan ng accounting eh. Okay, ang accounting lang na, na itinuturo natin dito for dun dun sa mga estudyante natin na BS Accountant, CBS uh, Management Accounting ay yung, yung for board exam required by the profession. But uh, as I told you earlier, actually every day we do accounting. Hindi lang natin namamalayan, no? As simple as accounting for our cash transactions for the whole day, that is accounting. That is an informal accounting. Okay, yung formal accounting, that is for big companies. Yung, yung mga nagko-comply talaga sa generally accepted accounting principles. No? But even yung mga small companies, they do accounting. Yung mga micro-businesses, they do accounting. Kahit nga tayo mga individuals, we do accounting. Okay, at ang maganda, sa mga student organization natin, uh, when we do accounting, okay, mas nagkakaroon ng transparency at nagre-reflect yung yung current status ng ating mga resources. Okay? Always remember, okay, na ang resources natin ay entrusted to us by by the members, by the organization as a whole. So we need to account for these transactions. We need to reflect anong status ng fund natin. And that can be made possible by accounting. All right? Okay, so here are the basic principles that we follow in preparing financial information, financial statements of our student organization. Number one is objectivity. So we should not allow bias, all right? Historical cost, which means that the recording of the transaction should be based on the actual, actual cost, no? Kung ang pagkabili mo sa isang item ay 300 pesos, should be reflected as 300 pesos. Walang, bag, walang bawas, wala rin dagdag. Okay, actual cost. Completeness, lahat ng transactions natin, lahat ng relevant information that can influence the decision making of the organization should be reported. Okay, hindi yung namimili ka lang. 
hindi yung nagwi-window dress ka ng financial information just to, to show the whole world that you have very strong financial condition. Hindi pwedeng ganun. Alright? And of course, timeliness para maging relevant yung information should be communicated timely uh, on a timely basis. No? Para makagawa tayo ng decision na relevant sa ating mga organization. And of course, to be uh, to be uh, relevant also the, the report should be understandable para makarelate kahit mga hindi student ng business, ng accounting, kayang maintindihan yung financial reports na pin-repair natin. Alright, so here are the major elements of financial statements. When you look at financial statements of companies, even yung mga maliliit na firms, they have, the, I'm sorry for the wrong spelling, assets. We have here assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses. Okay, assets are the resources owned by the company, such as cash, receivable, inventories, all right, building, land, those are assets owned and controlled by the company. Liabilities in yung mga utang ng organization, all right, um, in the form of accounts payable, loans payable. Equity is the residual value when you deduct liabilities from the total assets. Sometimes, or Madalas sinatawag itong owner's equity kasi ito lang talaga yung pag-aari ng mga owners or ng mga members natin dahil pag dinedak mo yung liabilities from the total assets, yan lang talaga yung matitira. Okay? Kasi syempre babayaran mo rin yung lahat ng liabilities mo and this will be coming from the total assets. Alright? And yung income, um, sa student organization when we conduct ng IGP activities, ayan, we earn income. Okay? And yung mga re related expenses in, in operation, and uh, pag nagkakanak tayo ng IGP, lahat ng expenses na yan ay uh, uh, in connection doon sa pag-earn natin ng income and pag operate natin ng student organization. Hindi naman tayo makakatakbo kasi without incurring expenses. Eh. Di ba? Okay. So, gawin lang natin familiar yung mga sarili natin dyan sa mga, mga konting technicalities lang na yan. Na very basic lang naman. No? Alright. So, now, let's take a look at the difference between the double entry and the single entry system. Sabi ko nga kanina mayroong uh, informal accounting eh, no? na ginagawa ng mga, uh, katulad natin mga individuals, na normally sinusundan din natin in our student organization. Okay, let's take a look at this table. This is an example of a double entry system. So, okay, sa formal uh, recording, sa accounting, ay double entry system ang sinusundan. So, you have heard... Maybe you have heard the terms like debit, credit. Okay, ito yun. For example, a transaction happened on October 8, 2021. So you have, to, you have to write here, debit to cash, credit to sales, credit to sales. For example, nagbenta kayo ng mga merchandise. Okay, may IGP kayo. So nagkaroon ng sales. You debit 2,000, credit 2,000. Okay, so hindi na natin pag-aaralan bakit siya nag-debit ng ganito, bakit siya nag-credit. I just want to show you here what is meant by double entry? Okay, ang ibig lang sabihin niyan, when uh, you account for a transaction, there must be at least two accounts affected. And that and those are cash and sales. Hindi pwedeng isa lang ang account affected. Da, lagi yan dalawa. At least dalawa rather. Pwede nga tatlo. Okay, pwede tayo mag-compound entry. Pag bumili ka ng supplies, you debit supplies expense and credit cash. You see, dalawa ulit na accounts ang affected. Yung isa, of, uh, supplies, expense, yung isa ay cash. Okay, amounting to 1,000. That's double entry. And okay, now this is what we are doing in, in our organization. We follow single entry system. This is informal. Okay, record keeping. So yung ginagawa nyo pala na naglilista-lista lang kayo ng date and then ilalagay nyo particular sales of merchandise, amount is 2,000. That's informal. That is based on single entry system. All right? October 9, purchase of supplies, 1,000, nakalagay lang doon. Okay, minsan nalagay mo to ng open and close parenthesis para mag-indicate na or i-indicate na ito ay cash outflow. Okay, and most of you, I believe, ganito lang ginagawa. Ito yung mga sinusundan ng mga, ano, mga simpleng negosyo like mga sari-sari store, like mga restaurant, kasi hindi sila nag -e employ ng double entry. Uh, hindi kasi accountant naman talaga yung gumagawa ng kanilang mga, mga records, eh, no? Uh, minsan yung owner lang na wala namang background. So, single entry lang. And pwede rin naman talaga, okay, kung, kung limited ang ating resources, pwede naman talagang gumamit ng, ng uh, single entry system tulad nito. Kaya ngayon din yung ginagamit natin sa ating mga student organization. No? Ayan. Okay. But no, take, 
take note of this. Single entry system is normally based on cash basis of accounting. Okay, so yung ginagawa pala natin pagre-record sa mga student org na ginagawa natin single entry ay based pala yan sa cash basis. Ibig sabihin, um, ang transaction natin or ang pagre-record ng transaction natin depende lang kung gumagalaw ba yung cash natin. So every time na nakakareceive tayo ng cash, for example, sales of merchandise, doon lang tayo nagre-record. Okay? Sales of merchandise, October 8. Pag nagkaroon ng cash outflow, purchase of supplies, for example, doon lang din tayo nagre-record ulit. Kaya siya tinawag na cash basis. Okay? Yung double entry kasi meron pa diyang mga uh, revenue recognition principle na sinusundan, expense recognition, actual basis of accounting. So medyo technical na yun. Okay, dito sa ating mga student organization, okay na ba itong single entry system? Okay na. Basta dapat complete, well accounted. Okay? Now, take a look at the template um, being used for the preparation of budgetary plan. Okay? For activity permit, I, I think, no? This is, a fi this is a financial table template. So I think that terms used naman are very friendly. For example, I'm sorry. Okay. For example, membership or voluntary contribution. Okay. So these are cash inflows kasi magagaling yun sa mga members. Okay. Then you, we also have cash inflow from income generating project. Okay. Pag meron kayong mga activities like mga nagtitinda ng hotdog which is nakakamiss, no? Lalo na pag mga intramurals ang dami mga estudyante nagtitinda ng hotdog. Nakakamiss yung mga hotdog ng mga estudyante, ah, na tinitinda ng mga estudyante. Alright, also donation, especially yung mga alumni natin, mababait nating mga alumni na nagdo-donate, okay, na, na madalas natin kinakamusta kasi nag a ng donation. And yung mga registration fees, kung meron tayong activity na kailangan ng registration ng mga participants at may bayad, okay, lalagay natin yung cash inflow. So anything na magkakaroon tayo ng cash receipts, okay, makakatanggap tayo ng cash for that specific activity, ilalagay mo dito sa cash inflow. Okay? Kailangan uh, nakalagay dyan yun for budgetary plan. Kasi, kaya mo siya kailangan ilagay, ibig sabihin, dito magagaling yung mga pera, okay, na gagasasin mo for the conduct of the activity. Kasi hindi ka naman talaga makakapagkandak ng isang activity nang wala kang makukulik na cash or gagamitin cash. Alright? And then, cash outflow, uh, mga pwedeng uh, cash outflow natin ay yung honorarium. For example, you invited a speaker at bibigyan mo siya ng certain amount, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, depende sa kanyang rate. Okay, token or yung mga prizes natin, yung mga uh, ibibigay natin dun sa ating mga guests or mga lecturer, okay, mga in-kind. Siyempre, bibilin din po natin yon cash outflow yon Yung program and certificates, yung pag-print, yung pagbili ng mga supplies, no? kung, kung may frame. Refreshments, kung face-to-face -face yung pinagbirienda natin. And of course, sa venue, ayan, medyo malaki-laki portion ito. Pagka, lalo na kung malaki ang venue, yung, yung uh, uh, place ng event. Yung communication, mga load normally. Transportation, okay. Um, we are all familiar with that. Promotion advertisement, for example, you will be printing tarpaulins, etc. No? To promote the activity. Yung mga school supplies natin na gagamitin for the activity. Medical allowance kung, kung meron, especially if the activity will require physical activities. So dapat merong mga ganyan. And yung contingency na uh, yung, yung amount will depend on the size or yung size yung budget natin for the whole activity. Okay, kung gano ba siya kalaki, gano kaliit. Siyempre, pag malaki yung activity, malaki din yung contingency. Kasi ibig sabihin dito natin kukuhanin yung... yung uh, for example, magkulang ng budget, di ba? Kasi estimates lang ito. Estimate, pwedeng magkulang, pwedeng sumobra. Uh, kung susobra, okay, yung cash inflow natin, eh, de, mas mabuti. Kaya lang, paano kung magkulang siya, no? Uh, ongoing activity, wala kang pagkukuhanan. So at least, meron kang portion na pagkukuhanan doon sa contingency mo. And uh, pwedeng meron pang mga cash outflow na ma-include dyan, aside from these items, okay? And then that will determine the total cash outflow of the activity or requirement of the activities. Then we deduct from the total cash inflow, then we'll arrive at the net cash flow. Okay, so then ipinapakita natin kung feasible bang makandak ng activity. San ba manggagaling yung resources? 
Okay, at saan may spend yung resources. So, kung mapapansin nyo, no, ang basic ng requirement ng OSA, cash basis lang siya, it's just cash inflow versus cash outflow. Okay, ganun kasimple. Para lang makita natin yung source ng fund at kung saan gagamitin yung fund. Okay, because uh, we are being trained to become responsible in handling funds. Okay, always remember that these funds are not our personal funds, but these are funds of the organization entrusted to us by the members. So we should spend these resources carefully, no? efficiently. Now let's go to, o oh, tapos na tayo sa accounting. Kapag account-account ka na, na-record mo na yung mga kailangan i-record. Okay? Now let's go to internal audit. Okay? So the audit that we are talking about here is internal audit. Kasi maraming klase ng auditing or ng audit. No? Merong mga financial statement audit. Okay, merong government audit ang ginagawa ng COA, ng BIR. Meron ding mga operations audit. Okay? Yung internal audit, kaya ito yung pinili natin dito sa topic kasi ito yung relevant sa student organization. This is being conducted by the auditor or elected auditor by the student organization. At ang gusto kong ma-realize natin yung maitama natin yung misconception that the auditor is responsible only for auditing cash. Kasi ganun naman madalas, no? Oh, you audit ka niyan. Hanapin yung pera. Saan dinala yung pera? Laging cash. But actually, it is an independent appraisal function established within an organization to examine and evaluate the activities as a service to the organization. Look, activities, hindi lang pera, hindi lang paghandle ng pera. Okay? Kaya lang minsan, na-associate natin yung audit sa cash kasi kadalasan ang ino-audit nga ay yung handling ng cash. Pero actually, it's the whole operation of the organization, of the business, of the company. Okay? Kung paano natin na-utilize yung resources, yung paano yung proper use ng resources natin sa organization, yung pagpapapirma, sinong dapat mag-authorize, sino dapat mag-handle ng funds, lahat yan dapat ay ginagawa ng auditor. So, ganun ka-broad ang ang, uh, ang uh, trabaho, ng, ganun karami yung trabaho ng auditor, hindi lang umiikot dun sa pera, sa paghandle ng fund, kundi sa buong operation. Alright? Okay. So, we have your policies versus implementation. This will be the basis of conducting the audit. Meron tayong student manual, for example, ah, meron tayong student handbook, for example, meron tayong mga manual of operations sa organization, or sa mga companies, meron code of conduct. So, this are the policies that should be, or the policies embodied in this manual handbook code of conduct should be followed by the organization. Anything na nag-govern sa operation ng student organization, they should be followed by the student organization. So, the role of the internal auditor is to make sure or to ensure that these policies are being complied with. Okay? Yun ang isa sa pinaka-importante yung trabaho ng internal auditor, not just on handling of cash. Okay? Kaya lang, napaka-crucial kasi ng, ng, ng uh, pag-handle ng cash natin dahil nga cash basis yung accounting, dahil nga yan ang isa lang naman sa pinaka-resource uh, ng, ng organization, cash. Kaya walang alam gawin minsan ng auditor, kundi i-audit ang i-audit yung cash. Ang na-overlook natin minsan as auditor ay may mga procedure pala tayo sa organization. May mga ginagawa pala tayo, even yung pagkakandak ng meeting, na hindi pala naaayon sa ating mga policy. So, kailangan yun ay masilip ng auditor at pag-usapan sa organization. Yung mga mali, yung mga hindi nagko-comply sa policy, kailangan itama. Okay? I-report yan lahat ng internal auditor. Okay? So, it says here that internal audit is not just about auditing cash. It's about the whole operation. Now, this is a very interesting topic, no? Uh, yung, yung isa sa mga important role ng auditor is to detect fraud. Okay? Ano ba yung fraud? It refers to an intentional act by one or more individuals among management, those charged with governance, okay, in the corporate setting, employees involving the use of deception to obtain an adjust or illegal advantage. So sa ating mga estudyante, malaki din ang possibility na namagkukumit tayo ng fraud. Okay? Lalo na yung mga officers ng ng uh, organization. So, ang role ng internal auditor, okay, babantayan natin, baka meron tayong mga student members na nagpa-practice ng fraud, especially yung treasurer natin who is handling the cash or the fund of the organization. Baka mag-commit siya ng fraud. Okay, sabi nga, 
Okay, employee product where there's a bill, there's a way. Okay, gagawa ng paraan para maka, maka in, in Tagalog, makakulda, no? Makakuha ng fund from the organization. Okay, we have two types of fraud. The fraudulent financial reporting or management fraud. Okay, and the most common na, na nakokomit ng mga employees or ng mga members ng organization, yung misappropriation of assets or employee fraud na tinatawag. Okay, ano yung pagkakaiba niyan? Ang financial reporting or management fraud, ginagawa ito ng mga members ng management sa financial reports. For example, ang kota ng company to meet the objective ay dapat maka, maka 100 million worth of sales sila. At the end of the year, ay 95 million pa lang ang sales ng company. They are very eager to meet the target kasi yung management nakaka-receive ng 10% bonus kapag ka na-meet nila yung target nila, yung quota nila na 100 million sales. So, with that uh, motivation, the management will <clears throat> intentionally alter or manipulate the financial statements. Gagawa ng mga fictitious sales, yung mga hindi totoo namang nangyari yung transaction para lang ma-reach yung 100 million. That's fraudulent financial reporting. Okay? Normally, yan ay nangyayari sa management level. Okay, ito naman yung madalas ginagawa kahit ng mga ordinaryong employee or student, katulad nyo, na member ng organization, yung misappropriation of assets. Ano yung mga example niyan? Halimbawa, yung org ninyo ay bumili ng printer para hindi na, ka, hindi na raw kayo nakikiprint kung saan-saan, meron na kayong sariling printer, ink. pero yung mga members natin ay... Uh, uh, or mga officers nagpi-print ng kanilang mga mga assignment projects dun sa printer, okay? Um tingnan mo yung policy. Kung yung policy na yun ay ang paggamit ng printer ay exclusive para sa uh, printing ng mga student permit activity or, or mga reports ng ng organization, pag ginagamit ka ng mga ng mga members ng ng for per personal nila ay misappropriation of assets ang tawag doon. So, dapat nire-report yung internal auditor. Okay? So, that, that is an example of misappropriation of assets. Sa mga, sa mga organization, sa mga private companies, yung halimbawa, yung, yung uh, company vehicle, tapos uh, ginagamit for personal use, that's misappropriation of assets. Yung uh, mga supply sa office, inuuwi. Okay? For example, uh, nag-uwi ng bond paper nag para sa mga project ng anak o kaya yung project ng anak ipinrint doon sa, sa, sa office yung mga ganun, misappropriation of assets yun o kaya yung mga inventories yung mga merchandise pinag-uwi that's misappropriation of assets no? Ayan. yung mga upuan ng, ng company inuwi, misappropriation so why, why does it happen? Okay? there are three things or factors that contribute to the commitment of fraud number one is opportunity Mabait naman kasi si President, eh. pag hiniram mo yung printer, nakiusap ka lang saglit na may, may ipiprint ang assignment, tumapayag naman agad. Maluwag kasi. Okay? Maluwag yung organization sa mga ganun. And uh, ang, ang nag, uh, nag, uh, uh, nagsisimula ay yung, yung leadership. Doon nagsisimula sa leadership. Pagka ang kultura, maluwag lang, dead ma lang, wala naman din ginagawa sa si internal auditor, so may opportunity to conduct or to commit fraud. Number two is motivation kasi the student or the employee of the organization uh, uh, motivated siya to commit fraud kasi he's living beyond his means. Okay? Malaki ang pangangailangan. Uh, kulang yung allowance nung, nung treasurer nyo. So dahil kulang yung allowance niya, hindi siya masyadong nakakakain ng, ng tatlong beses sa isang araw. So meron siyang motivation to commit fraud para kuhanin yung i-utilize yung pera on his uh, personal advantage. And of course, the rationalization. Pagka nakikita mo kasi na hmm, yung ibang members nga print ng print yan eh, sa printer, o kaya yung iba nga yung, yung service vehicle natin, gamit sila ng gamit, eh di ako din. Sila nga, ginagawa, parang normal lang din naman, wala namang bumabawal. So, nagiging uh, justification mo yung ganun. Nara-rationalize. No? And it, it will be a culture of the organization na. Okay, so these are the three factors why there are uh, employees or student members na nagko-commit ng fraud. Kaya dapat ikaw na internal auditor, tinitingnan mo yan. Okay? Tinitingnan mo yan. Napakasimple ng example natin, printer lang. Pero pagdating sa mga malalaking companies na kasi, ay mas maraming resources yung pwedeng mawala. Okay? Especially cash. Kasi nga ang cash ay uh, inherent to its nature, madali siyang 
ma-subject sa fraud, madaling maging subject ng ng theft, madaling nakawin, di ba? Ang pera pag nilabas mo ng office, hindi naman makikita eh. E try mong mag ano, mag uh, maglabas ng sofa, huli ka kaagad, di ba? Huli ka kaagad bibitbit kang sofa. Kaya nga pagka nagtatakal uh, tayo ng mga topic sa fraud, mas mas kadalasan ang nagiging subject talaga ng fraud ay cash. Okay, kasi prone siya sa theft, no? Okay, so how do we detect fraudster? Sino kaya sa mga student members natin ang sa tingin natin ay uh, malamang fraudster ito? Okay, can, can I see myself on screen? Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, siguro mga five ano na lang to, five slides na lang to. Okay, meron kang kaklase before, tapos ngayon naging treasurer siya, dati hindi nga siya maka-afford masyado ng mga ng ano, yung yung very deprived siya sa kanyang mga mga pangangailangan. Then ngayon, every day naka, nag nagmi-milk to yung ate mo, no? Biglang nagkaroon ng change ng lifestyle. Biglang naging ano siya, naging uh, uh, maluho na. So hindi naman natin sinasabi na siya ay fraudster or baka kinuk kinukuha niya yung pera ng organization, ginagastos niya, pero okay, meron ka ng may meron ng indication. Okay? Okay naman living behind this means kulang lagi kasi yung baon ko eh kulang kulang lagi yung pambili ko ng ng project etc. yung mga ganun. So may medyo mahirap na na um masado naman yatang judgmental pag sinabi natin masyado medyo mahirap pag dati wala ano. Kaya lang watch out for these people. Okay? Under stress, yung laging nakikita mo na araw-araw parang malungkot siya, parang ang bigat ng mundo niya. Okay? Laging stress nung pala meron sa mga financial problems. So, pwedeng indikasyon yun na na magbigay ng signal na ito ay mag-commit ng fraud. Especially kapag siya yung in-charge sa handling of cash. No? Has evident financial needs, yung mga ganun. O nabalitaan mo ba si, si classmate na ganito, no? naghiwalay pala yung ganito, yung, yung parents niya, kawawa naman. Tapos yung nagpapaaral sa kanya, wala na, hindi na, hindi na raw siya binibigyan ng baon. Tapos yung boarding house niya, five months na raw, hindi na nababayaran, etc. O dyan naman natin makapapakinabangan yung mga brothers and sisters natin na 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 parang mga human CCTV, no? yung mas nauuna pa sa balita. Okay? Sila yon yung mga mag, ma, masarap maging ano, maging uh, uh, pang, pang uh, determine ng mga fraudster o mga possible na fraudster. At hard worker daw itong mga fraudster. Sir, paano naging hardworking sila eh? Eh, or paano naging fraudster eh, hardworking na okay may mga organization kasi halimbawa class na ang mga empleyado nila minsan ginagabi ng uwi nag-o-overtime magtataka ka bakit wala masyadong hardworking wala namang bayad ng overtime bakit lagi nag-o-overtime yung pala gusto nila sila yung nahuhuli sa office para pag wala ng paon nakakapag uwi ng mga uh, supplies ng mga kung anong pwedeng iwi sa office kahit yung mga mga laman ng pantry ng ref minsan inuuwi mga hardworking employees tong mga to nag-o-overtime kahit wala namang bayad. Okay? Indikasyon yun na may fraud. Okay? So, eto naman. Paano naman natin mapeprevent itong fraud? Okay? So, implement checks and balance. Kaya nga meron tayong internal auditor. No? Siya yung mag-check ng mga operations and do not give sensitive functions to one person. Pag ang uh, handling ay uh, nasa isang uh, tao lang, tapos siya rin nagre-record normally kasi Uh, yung mga sensitive functions na ganyan, siya rin nagko-collect ng lahat. Pinagkatiwala niyo na lahat sa kanya, mahirap yon Mas madali para sa isang tao na uh, gamitin personally yung pera or mag-commit ng fraud. Okay? Pagka siya lahat. Conduct random audits. O random means so dapat hindi ka nag-a-announce. Pag ikaw yung internal auditor, manghuli ka minsan. O nasan yung ganito? Magkano na yung update na, ng collection natin? O nasan yung pera? Okay? Yung mga companies kasi minsan, ano eh, nag announce sila ng audit. O, magkakaroon tayo ng audit on ganito. Okay? On ganitong date. So, napapaghandaan. Kaya dapat ang pag-audit, random. Yung bigla na lang tatanungin mo siya, magkano na yung collection sa ganito? Nasaan yung pera? Mga ganon. para medyo may gulat factor, no? Okay. Kasi paghahandaan niya, pagka ini-inform mo siya ahead of time eh. Okay. Maintain a minimal amount of cash. Okay. Dapat ba minimal amount of cash lang? Yes. Dahil, ang cash sabi ko nga napaka prone to theft niyan no ang ang uh, cash pag nakuha yan may universal value hindi mo naman pwedeng oy akin yung amin yung cash niya may tatak yan may eh, kabisado kay serial number niyan eh no unless sa uh, i mark money okay 
So, dapat maintain ng ito mga problems ng mga estudyante minsan pagka nag activity no? Nasa sa kanila yung cash, ang lalaking amount, nilalagay lang sa bag. Especially yung naka-dorm, napakalaking problema niyan, no? Iuwi mo sa dorm, okay, 50,000 or 100,000, okay? Tapos wala namang mga lock yung mga locker. Yung sinabing locker, wala namang lock. Minsan may mga ganun. Okay, okay. Yung, yung mga, alimbawa, itatagong nila sa mga lalagyan ng damit, yung mga jura box nila, ganun, tapos walang lock. Okay? Andun lang yung pera. So, delikado yun. Baka maamoy ng ating mga mga kasamahan, yung mga taong nakapaligid sa atin na ikaw yung may pera, delikado. Pwede nilang kuhanin. And of course, encourage offices and members to report wrongdoing. Kahit sa mga company, dapat mag-establish sila ng culture na ine-encourage ang whistleblowing. Diba? Dito rin sa atin sa student organization, it's not just the responsibility of the officers or the president or, or uh, auditor. No? It's the responsibility of everybody. Kasi ang cash naman na yan ay hindi lang naman pera ng isang member, hindi lang naman pera ng isang tao. Pera ng lahat ng members ng organization. Co-owner ang mga members dyan. So, dapat tayong lahat ay nagsiserve as internal auditor ng organization. Kaya papakinabangan dating dapat yung mga kapatid natin dyan na mga human CCTV. Sila yung taga-determine, taga-identify. Okay? Yung mga sinasabi natin, mga mimosa indica, yung mga la- may lahing tismosa, ganun. Sila yun. Dapat pakinabangan natin sila dyan. Okay? The common problems encountered, these were based on the interviews I conducted uh, um, few days ago. Okay? Sa mga naging treasurer na ng mga organization, like dito sa college namin, yung JPIA, okay? yung CSG namin, Okay, having too much cash on hand. Ito daw yung halimbawa matagal yung matagal pay activity. Tapos um halimbawa sa isang sem nag-collect ng ng pera or ng collection tapos nasa treasurer lang, no? Okay? Ang ang hirap noon kasi kahit saan siya magpunta parang parang feeling niya bawal yung ibaba yung bag niya kasi nandun lahat yung pera. Okay? Non non availability of cash on hand. Pag uh, halimbawa may kailangan namang bilhin, wala namang hawak na cash. No, ang hirap kasi mag-aabono yung treasurer natin. Mahirap yun lalo naman na kung yung treasurer natin ay uh, deprived din sa sa ano, baon tapos iaabono pa na sa student organization. Siya nga naglalakad from from dorm to to CBA halimbawa para makatipid tapos aabonohan niya yung yung mga dapat gastos ng organization, di ba? Walang walang fairness pag ganun. Yung juggling of funds, eto yung yung uh, minsan na na-encounter ng mga students natin or ng mga officer natin, treasurer natin, no? Halimbawa, meron silang limang, limang IGP. So, kailangan ma-account mo kung kumikita yung lahat ng limang IGP na yun. Eh, iisa lang yung wallet mo, or isa lang yung mo ng pera, no? Nagkahalo-halo na. Okay? Hindi mo na alam kung magkano ba yung nakolekta mo sa ganito. Tapos, pati personal mong pera na ihahalo mo. Dapat, separate ina-account ang personal na pera mo sa pera ng organization. Kasi at the end, ikaw mamamroblema dyan. Lack of policies on cash advances and reimbursements. Oh, maraming mga organizations na ganito, wala silang policies sa cash advances, reimbursements, sino ba dapat magre-request, sinong mag approve anong dapat na ipiniprepare ng mga, ng mga documents bago aprobahan. Yung mga ganon. And uh, ito, common common na uh, problem din to, unsubstantiated transactions. Sir, paano naman natin, paano ko naman masasabi as auditor kung kung tama ba yung mga nakalagay na amount diyan eh wala namang OR okay wala namang naka-attach na OR wala tapos pag tinanong mo yung member na na na-involve sa activity sasabihin nila eh kasi po so makain naman kami ng tricycle sa NATO eh wala namang official receipt yung NATO sige nga manghingi ka kayo ng OR ng NATO kung meron o so paano ang approach na gagawin mo as internal auditor okay nakalagay lang doon fair okay a transportation expense ganito Ganitong halaga. O eh, wala namang may i-attach na OR. Eh, nag-XLT po kami, wala namang OR. Okay, all you have to do is to look for the reasonableness of the amount. Okay? So, kung halimbawa, ang tindabi lang naman niya from CLSC to Munoz, syempre, dapat uh, kung magkano lang talaga yung fair. Pag ganun. O pag sinabi nila, bakit ang laki nito? Pag sinabi nila, dalawang balik kami eh. Tingnan mo, bakit? An- bakit kayo nagdalawang balik? Ano ba yung, yung binit-bit nyo? Mabibigat ba yan? Ba't kailangan kayo magdalawang balik? Nag-arkila kasi kami ng tricycle from Munoz to CLSU eh, kasi ang mga dinala namin, nalakang mga tubig, mga ganito, or reasonable yon, Okay? Tapos ang, inut- ang ang member na gumawa, babae pa, natural, alangan namang mag-commute siya ng XLT, tapos bit-bit na yung mga tubig, mga pagkain, ang dami-dami. So, mag-aarkil uh, nga naman siya ng tricycle. So, yung mga transactions, guys, na wala talagang uh, official receipt, no? 
hindi masubstantiate ng mga official receipt. All you have to do is to determine the reasonable amount. Okay? Kaya mo naman yan i-compare. Eh. Kaya mo yung tingnan yung magkano ba talaga ang reasonable amount ng artila ng tricycle from San Jose to CLSU, CLSU to San Jose. Okay? Baka mamaya nagkiklaim 500. O tingnan mo rin na kailang, baka naman ilang balik to. Ano ba yung mga kinuha nilang items? Sobrang bigat ba? Kasi kung ang binili lang naman, office, ano po, mga school supplies, band paper, ilang ring, isa lang, tapos ang nakalagay ng arkila ng tricycle worth 500, ah, hindi reasonable. Okay? So, ano mo yun? Audit findings mo yun. Dapat yan ay nag-XLT lang. Okay? Alright. Um, mangingi, doon naman sa mga transactions na dapat may OR, mangingi kayo ng OR. Sabi nga ni BIR, ask for official receipt kasi nalulugi rin si BIR pag walang official receipt dahil hindi yun minsan kiniklaim na or hindi na report yun na income ng mga ano eh mga mga tindahan di ba ng mga store na dapat nag issue ng OR so ikaw ang participation mo for the economic growth and development of this country bang hingi ka ng OR para tong mga tindahan na to dahil merong OR okay pagka nag report sila ng kanilang mga income based on cash basis kung magkano yung binili na report nila at masa subject sa tax ganun yun okay ayan Okay, here are some of the best practices. Siguro dalawang slides na lang. Okay, dahil doon sa mga common problems na yon na, na, na nakalap ko, ito naman yung best practices na ano yung ginagawa natin para, para <clears throat> or pwede natin gawin para hindi natin ma-encounter yung mga ganong problems. No? So the organization should maintain a bank account. Pwede kayong mag-open ng account. Para kung halimbawa mayroon tayong mga activities na ang laki ng perang pumapasok, Okay, hindi hina-handle or hindi hinahawakan ng treasure kasi pag sinabi niya na wala, wala na kayong magagawa. Kahit patayin niyo ko, kahit na pigain niyo ko ngayon, nawala talaga 'yung pera. O ano pa magagawa mo? Nawala na. 'Di ba? Ayun, kaya dapat meron kayong mga lifestyle check din, tinitingnan niyo 'yung kaklase niyo o 'yung 'yung sis or brad niyo, ano bang mga ganap sa buhay niya. Baka mamaya 'no, labas ng labas, aya ng aya mag-sandwich, dati naman hindi nga kumakain ng dinner 'yan eh, diet-dietan 'yan kasi nga wala siyang baon ngayon. Araw-araw sandwich, araw-araw milky, wait lang ha, ganun. The organization should establish a petty cash fund. Ito naman ay to address yung problem natin na wala kayong existing cash, okay? Na na eh kasi sir, pinalo namin yung yung ano eh, yung best practice number one eh. So nag nag ano kami ng nag-open kami ng account, andun lahat yung cash. Okay? So every time may transaction, magre-request kami ng ganun, ang haba naman ng procedure. So pag kailangan mo na ng cash na pamasahe lang naman o pambili lang na mal maliliit na items, wala ka naman ngayon makuha. Okay, magamit. So ang nag-aabono naman, treasurer. So dapat meron kayong existing petty cash fund. Yung worth mga 2,000 lang para if ever may mga emergency lang na kailangan bayaran, na kay treasurer yon Minimal amount lang. Okay? Ba, nag-tricycle lang naman, may, pam may pamasahe pa din. The treasurer should account separately the cash from different sources. So kung may mga IDP kayo, Lima yan. Dapat lima yung mga lalagyan nyo ng pera para hindi nyo na paghahalo-halo. Okay? Nagkakaroon kasi ng juggling of funds minsan. Ah, ginamit sa ganito, ginamit. Mga laping activities na, may mga kiting activities na dyan na pinag, pinaghalo-halo ng sinadyanan ng treasurer para talagang mawala yung ano, no? Mawala yung, or magamit na yung pera. Para paraan. Okay? The last three tips. Okay, the treasurer should update the records immediately after each transaction. Ito napaka-importante. Do not, do not trust your memory. Na okay na yun, mamaya na lang ako mag-update or bukas na lang or once a week na lang. Tatandaan ko naman eh, no. Okay? Diyan ka pahihirapan ng sarili mo. Pag ina-account mo siya, parang kulang na. Okay? Ano na nga yung binigay sa akin? Ano minsan? Friend, ano na nga yung binigay mo nung nakaraan? Ayan. Isa-isa mo nang trace ulit. Pero... Kung i-nire-record mo yun agad-agad, okay? Wala kang makakalimutan. Basta pag may nagbayad, record ka kaagad. Okay? Kahit na sa buong araw, naka 100 times kang nag-record, okay lang yun. Paano mong i -re yan lahat kung halimbawa 2 days nagdaan? Sige nga, ang hirap. Immediately after each transaction, mag-record ka na kaagad. Alright, kung ikaw yung treasurer at ikaw yung in-charge. The organization should have policies on cash advances and reimbursement. So, dapat in place tong mga ito. Okay? May mga best practices sa... Natinanong ko yung JP, ah. Uh, meron silang mga form, cash advances na form, yung receipts and reimbursements na uh, if you fill up nung magre-request and then i-approve ng uh, kung sino man yung dapat mag-approve. 
o nag-authorize. And the auditor should determine the reasonableness of the amount. Ito yung sa audit ng mga unsubstantiated transactions na kahit anong gawin natin, wala naman talagang amount. Okay? So, ang pwedeng gawin internal auditor in determining the reasonableness, okay, magtanong, mag-research. No? Ano ba ang fair na amount or reasonable amount sa mga ganitong transaction? Okay? Kasi ang pinipresent dito ng treasurer or ng activity head ay ganito raw ang nagasa sa ganitong uh, item, etc. Parang di naman ako makapaniwala. Magkano po ba talaga? Mga ganon. Okay? So, kailangan magre-research ka. Alright, so that's all, I think, for for this uh, topic. Naku, mukhang masyado kong na sobrahan sa oras, no? Sorry naman. Okay, for your questions, please feel free to ask your questions. So, ayan. Thank you so much po, sir. Um, siksik na siksik po sa information ang inyong lecture. And ang pinaka napulot ko po sa inyo is that accounting is really important because it helps us track our funds and expenditure. At napakahalaga po nito, especially sa mga organizations, kapag magkakandak po sila ng mga projects and activities. And kapag usapang pong pera talaga, sobrang kailangan po talaga mabusisi at dapat maayos po talaga dapat lagi. And thank you po sa mga tips niyo, sir. How about you, friend? Yes. Yes, and sa akin naman po, I realized na, tsaka kanina ko lang din na-realize na, oo nga, no, we do accounting every day. Hindi tayo, hindi tayo aware, hindi natin alam, pero hindi natin alam na napapractice natin that na, napapractice natin kahit pa paano yung accounting sa maliliit na bagay na ginagawa natin. And aside from that, I also learned po na hindi lang pala pera yung ino-audit dapat ng auditor, dapat marunong din siyang mag-investigate din ng mga activities ng ating uh, uh, mga organizations. And sa mga tips naman po, isa sa mga, nags, na, isa sa mga tumatak din sa akin ay do not trust your memory. Lalo na sa panahon yan. Uh, dapat marunong, dapat kapag ka may transaction or kapag ka may, uh, yun nga, transaction, dapat nire record ka agad natin and dapat may policies tayo pagdating sa mga paghawak na pera or for uh, Ayun po. And in general, I think we were reminded this afternoon po that student leaders man or hindi, we should be responsible and honest in everything we do. Right, partner? Yes, right, yes. partner. And I think ready na tayo for the question and answer portion. Yes, and uh, so ito here are the first uh, few questions po. For our first question, sabi po dito, how many percent of the total allotted funds should be allotted for the contingency allowance? So, all right. So actually, um, hindi ko alam dun sa sa template na binigay ng OSA if meron tayong standard percentage. But based on my experience, wala namang uh, standard na percentage or any amount. For example, uh, meron kang ginawang budgetary plan na ang uh, cash inflow or or uh, um, yes cash inflow is 10,000 and then nung bin, nilagay mo yung mga breakdown ng mga cash outflows mo or expenses mo nag-amount siya ng 8,500 so para masakto siya ng 10,000 normally ganun yung practice para pang balance siya para siyang in, in the in the context of accounting para siyang reconciling item all right para masakto mo yung requirement ng budget, maglalagay ka doon ng contingency fund na uh, amounting to 1,500 okay, para uh, masakto yung 10,000. Normally, ganun. Okay, pero para safe, I think 10% ng uh, total fund, 10 to 20% ng uh, total uh, fund requirement or budget should be allotted for contingency para safe tayo. Kasi estimate lang yun eh, di ba? So, ayun, estimate thank you lang. so much po, sir. Um, eto na po ang ating sister. Do you suggest that we conduct random audits? Yes, of course, random nga dapat para mas objective, no? Kasi pag ina-announce mo yan ahead of time, though syempre sasabihin ni Treasurer, oy pag mag-audit ka na, masabihan mo ko kasi yung mga reports kailangan kong i-prepare, no? Pero kasi as Treasurer, ah, uh, kailangan updated yung records mo. Dapat nga, after ng mga transaction, naka-record ka agad. Tapos pag sinabihan ka mag-prepare ng financial reports, available lahat yung kailangan mong data. 
So, pag yan sinabihan mo ahead of time, paghahandaan ka niyan. Okay? Paghahanda. Parang sa kalaban, para para matalo mo yung kalaban mo, kailangan yung hindi siya mag-prepare. Kasi pag pinaghandaan ka niyan, may possibility yung matalo ka niya. Di ba? Dapat random lang. Yung biglaan lang na, oye, pwenta, check nga ng records mo, nung cash natin. Magkano ba ganyan? Yung mga, doon mo kasi madidiscover na, ay, hindi siya updated. Ay, hindi siya nagre-record on time. Ay, may nawawalang pera. Ay, yung ganito, hindi niya alam kung magkano. Di ba? He's not doing his job. Yung mga ganun. So, dapat um, unannounced. Okay. Thank you so much po, sir. And another question po. Uh, sabi po dito, in the case that the treasurer lost the funds that he or she handles and is not able to pay for it, what should be done? Um, sa student conduct natin, so sa, oh, sa I'm not familiar kung anong uh, policy yung pwedeng mag-cover dito, no? kung meron siyang mga penalty or kung ano yung mga sanction na pwede niyang makaharap. No? Pero the safest way ay uh, gumawa siya ng promissory note, magpa-promise siya na ibabalik niya yung pera, regardless kung anong nangyari, kasi we can never tell what really happened. No? It is really the responsibility of the treasurer to give back the money. Mawala man niya for whatever reason. Kasi kahit sino naman, pwede naman sabihin na wala ko eh. May kumuha eh. Hindi ko naman kasalanan, may kumuha eh. The fact that you are the treasurer, ingat yaman, you have to take care of the funds. Bakit kasi pinabayaan mo? Saan mo ba nilagay? Okay? Ba't kasi hindi mo dineposit sa bank? Di ba dapat ide-deposit sa bank? Ba't kasi nilagay mo yung 20,000 sa bag mo lang tapos iniwan mo? Di ba? Yun ay um, kapabayaan. Okay? Hindi niya iningatan. E, ingat yaman ka nga, hindi mo iningatan eh. No, wala tuloy. So for whatever reason, he or she is still accountable for that. Okay? I just don't know kung anong uh, pwedeng maging sanction sa university as student, ano, uh, bilang isang student member or member ng, ng organization. Pero in the, in the context of um, handling fines okay, ng, ng organization, yun ay responsible pa rin. Ah, yung treasurer na nakawala ng pera ay responsible pa rin dun sa fund na yun. Kasi the fund is entrusted to him or her. Responsibility na yun. So thank you so much po, sir. Yes. I think wala na po tayong uh, mga po, tanong. Thank you po, sir, I guess. Yes. And as a mark of appreciation to our second speaker, for today's webinar episode, we would like to present to you this Certificate of Appreciation. And this, this Certificate of Appreciation is given to Assistant Professor Gaudencio P. Gallardo, Jr. for sharing his time and expertise as the resource speaker of the topic GAIN, Grasping Accounting and Auditing Intricacies as part of the CLSU Youth Empowerment Series, Yes, We Can, held online via Zoom and Facebook Live on October 9, 2021. Signed, Daisy C. Acuna, the Executive President of Veterinary Circle for 10, and Dr. Froyland Bernard Matias, the Advisor of the Veterinary Circle for 10. Thank you so much, sir. Please accept our thanks for your great presentation. Thank you, then. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure to share my knowledge. Thank you. So thank you, thank you so much, po, sir. Yes. Before we do our wrap up, may I invite our participants here on Zoom to turn on their cameras, please, for a group photo. Mitzi will do the countdown of the picture taking. So picture taking, po, muna yes. tayo. Ayan. Ayan, baka nag -re retouch din sila, no? So, alright, I guess we're ready. Okay, in three, two, one, smile! Ayan, isa pa po, yung ngiting pasado daw this, uh, Sam. Pasado sa accounting friend. Okay, in three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in three, two, one. Ayan, there you go. Thank you so much, Po, sir. We're very glad and we're honored to have you here as our resource speaker for today's episode. Maraming salamat, Po. Thank you, Po. And to show our appreciation and gratitude 
for our partner organizations. Here is Circular Daisy Acuna to present the certificate. Good afternoon to all of you. So, let me read the citations. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Youth Leadership for Democracy, University Supreme Student Council, Veterinary Student Government, Development Communication Student Council, CBAA Corporate Student Government, College of Engineering Student Government, Office of Student Affairs, CLSU Collision, College of Science Student Council, Social Sciences Student Council, and College of Education Student Council for being our partners in the educational program entitled CLSU Youth Empowerment Series Yes We Can, held online via Zoom and Facebook Live on September 25 and October 9, 2021. Signed by Daisy C. Acuna, Executive President of Veterinary Circle for 10, and Dr. Froilan Bernard R. Matias, Advisor of Veterinary Circle for 10. To show our gratitude to our very talented Masters of Ceremonies in this program, let me read their certificate citations. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Ms. Mitzi Trix Fernandez and Mr. Justin Josiah Estiliore for being our Masters of Ceremonies in this educational program entitled CLSU Youth Empowerment Series Yes We Can held online via Zoom and Facebook Live on September 25 and October 9, 2021 Signed by Daisy C. Acuna, Executive President of Veterinary Circle for 10 and Dr. Froilan Bernard R. Matias, Advisor of Veterinary Circle for 10 On behalf of the Veterinary Circle for 10 Thank you very much to our partner councils and organizations and to our Masters of Ceremonies for without all of you, this program wouldn't be possible. And thank you so much VC10 and thank you very much to our partner organizations. Once again, we would like to remind our dear participants that you can post or tweet your takeaways with the hashtags, hashtag CLSU yes, yes we can, and hashtag, uh, hashtag CLSU Youth Empowerment Series and hashtag yes we can, and make sure that the post or tweet is in a public privacy setting so that our facilitators can easily see your post and watch out for our bonus questions which we will post after this webinar on our facebook page at veterinary circle for 10 and from there we will choose one winner per topic so make sure to join us and get a chance to win 50 pesos you may also post a my story or my day on your instagram and or on facebook accounts using the template that we have prepared for you you may access the template through the link which which is on the screen and is on the Zoom chat box and Facebook comment section. Please don't forget to tag us, Veterinary Circle for 10, and use our official hashtags mentioned a while ago. Yes, and we encourage everyone to fill out to please spare us a moment of your time to fill out the evaluation form for this episode. And the link and QR code is flashed on the screen. And on, uh, so you may claim your e-certificate. Uulitin po namin. Oh, okay, ayan yung ating QR code and, uh, and the link for our evaluation form. So uulitin po namin, ang makakakuha ng e-certificates ay ang mga nakaregister at nakafill out ng evaluation form. Also, kung sakaling may na-miss kayo na point or gusto nyong balikan itong episode, ah, sana all down, may binabalikan. Choke lang. Uh, kung gusto nyong balikan itong episode natin or yung una nating episode, the recordings of our webinar episodes will be posted on our YouTube account at Veterinary Circle for 10 and the link will be sent to you via email and will be posted on our Facebook page. 
and to keep keep to keep yourself updated with our latest and upcoming activities like this if you haven't yet give us a like and follow on on our official facebook page at veterinary circle 410 we also um we are also on instagram youtube uh, twitter and on instagram and youtube you may follow us at the same name veterinary circle 410 on twitter follow us at CLSU underscore underscore VC10. And you may also follow our dear partners for this webinar through their social media accounts that you'll see on your screen. Yes. So give us a like and the follow. There you go. And to formally conclude this webinar episode, here is the current president of the Veterinary Circle for 10, Circular Daisy Acuna. First, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to our resource speakers from the first episode up to the last, Sir Christopher Castillo, Madam Linnell Alejandro, Madam Maria Bernadette Pagio, Madam Jamie Benemerito, and Sir Gaudencio Gallardo Jr. for their willingness to spend time to impart with us their knowledge and expertise. And of course, thanks as well to our partner councils and organizations for without your cooperation this would this educational program wouldn't have been a success to our dear participants i hope you listened well to our sessions took some notes and may you apply your learnings to do good for yourself for your family the organizations where you belong your community and for our country May this activity have helped you to become more effective, efficient, and empowered youth leaders. As we end this program, let us not just tell ourselves, yes, I can, but also, yes, I will. Because you can only make a difference when you start to act. As the famous quote by Joel A. Baker says, Vision without action is merely a dream. Action without vision is just passing the time. But vision with action can change the world. Again, thank you very much and good afternoon to all. There you go. Thank you so much, Circular Daisy. Sabi nga niya, hindi lang yes, I can, but yes, I will. Because vision with action can change the world. And before we end, we would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to our partner organizations for this activity. The Youth Leadership for Democracy or the Youth-Led Philippines, the CLSU University Supreme Student Council, the Veterinary Student Government, Development Communication Student Council, the College of Business Administration and Accountancy Corporate Student Government, and the College of Engineering Student Government. This webinar is also in collaboration with the Office of Student Affairs, CLSU, CLSU Student Organization Unit, CLSU Collegian, and Radio CLSU. With support from the College of Science and Student Council, Social Sciences Student Council and College of Education Student Council. We also wish to thank the CLSU Maestro Singers for supporting our activity by giving us their peace during the introductory remarks. Yes, thank you so much, Paul. And once again, we are requesting our dear participants on Zoom to kindly turn on their cameras for another photo op. Once our facilitators on Zoom will be taking the photo after the count, show us your brightest smile today. Yes, yeah. in please allow me to orchestrate the countdown. In three, two, one, smile. And isa pa daw, waki daw. In three, two, one, smile. 
Ayan. Ayan. So, in on behalf of the Veterinary Circle for 10 and our partner organizations, we wish to extend to you all our most genuine appreciation for joining us on Zoom and for those who tuned in to us on Facebook li live stream. Thank you so much po. Yes, thank you so much. It's, it's a great weekend to be with you this afternoon. And that's about everything. Salamat na lang sa lahat, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. It's a joy learning with you in these two episodes of our CLSU Youth Empowerment Series. Yes, we can. We hope that everyone watching this is safe at home and you guys enjoyed it just as we do. Once again, I am Mitzi. And I am Justin. We have been your moderators for this second episode of CLS, CLSU Youth Empowerment Series. Yes, we can. Ingat po at maraming salamat. See you again soon. Thank you po.